they started running cars in the late 1800s uh, for the first time. And they were very simple engines, et cetera, but they ran primarily on alcohol. It was the only reliable combustible fuel that was available. Oil had already been discovered, but it had a whole different role in, in our you know, in our country, it was used for heating and lighting homes. So the part that they couldn't use for heating and lighting homes, the stuff that tended to explode and nobody wanted to put it in an oil lamp, they threw away, literally threw away. And so uh, Rockefeller doing some experimentation figured out that although it didn't do such a good job of this, it would run a car too. And started selling it at dirt cheap prices in the cities where he had his oil distribution business. So gasoline was an industrial waste byproduct that was you know, marketed as an alternative to the standard fuel, which was alcohol during the time. And many of the first cars ran on um, either fuel. But I just, wanna, I just wanna underscore the fact that oil as a transportation fuel was a toxic waste byproduct that was being dumped into the, the transportation system because this theme is gonna come back right up till today. So Rockefeller was selling oil, and the big proponent of alcohol in cars was Henry Ford. He thought that alcohol was the very best fuel for cars, and it was clean, it was efficient, uh, and as Henry Ford used to say, there were a lot more stills in this country than there were service stations. And this was very, very true in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So Ford and Rockefeller fought tooth and nail over what should be the nation's fuel supply until Rockefeller decided not to play fair anymore. So what he did was rather diabolical. He funded a little group of, of whacked out old ladies called the Women's Christian Temperance Movement. These people had been around since the late 1800s, a championing against demon rum. And so what Rockefeller did is he gave this group $4 million to go ahead and lobby Congress to get alcohol outlawed. And uh, to just kind of put that in a modern context, that would be like giving Jerry Falwell $400 million nowadays to lobby Congress. And you can buy Congress for that. That's, that's pretty understandable. So they did it, they, and they passed a law called Prohibition, which you've all read about or heard about, and you thought it probably had something to do with drinking and moral decay of the United States. So can you imagine an all-male Congress voting to prevent working men from drinking, okay? <laughs> As, as like a natural consequence of any kind of political discussion? I don't think so. But for $4 million, it was no problem. And so for 13 years, alcohol went off the market as a fuel, as an industrial product, which used to compete with many oil products, and of course, uh, for drinking also. After they make everything that's valuable, that they call valuable out of oil, plastics, drugs, pesticides, industrial chemicals, everything that's left over is dumped into the gasoline. So on any given day, there are 400 toxic chemicals in gasoline, and those will not necessarily be the same chemicals the next day. It's whatever's left over. So gasoline is the biggest toxic waste disposal system in the world, and it's in the open, and it's legal. They're able to use our cars to spew their toxic waste back into the air, and they make something like $2,500 from a barrel of oil, from the other chemicals and they make $100 from the gasoline. And they don't care if they made zero because they get rid of all their toxic waste.